Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. I hope you're enjoying today um, the OpenShift Commons gathering here. Um, we're really thrilled that you've decided to join us for the day um, and participate in this event. Um, and I'm really pleased today to um, bring this next um, panel together, um, more of a conversation than a panel, hopefully, we'll have today. Um, we've invited uh, Priyanka Sharma and Todd Moore. Priyanka is the general manager at the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and Todd Moore is the VP of Open Technology, IBM Developer and Developer Advocacy at IBM. Um, and um, what we wanted to try and do today is have a bit of, conver bit of a conversation about how to empower um, the end users and talk a little bit about the changing role of um, end users in open source initiatives, ecosystems, and projects. So I'm really pleased because Priyanka coming from um, the foundation point of view, Todd having a, a really extensive background in open source program office and open source advocacy, um, bring a whole ton of experience um, to this uh, conversation and insight. So I'm really thrilled and, and pleased to have them there. And um, if you don't know me, I'm Diane Mueller. I am um, the Director of Community Development and the organizer and founder and person behind the scenes at um, OpenShift Commons and working through the OKD Working Group um, as well to do that open source project. So um, I'm going to ask each of uh, the uh, organizers and we can turn it over to uh, everybody's picture showing now, if you don't mind. There you go. There are my um, lovely and handsome and wonderful folks. Um, perhaps, um, Priyanka, if you could um, introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what your role is now at um, CNCL. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Diane. Hi, everybody. I'm Priyanka Sharma, and I am the general manager for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which hosts uh, critical infrastructure technology projects such as Kubernetes, Prometheus, Envoy, etc. Today, we are 70 plus projects, and uh, the end users in our ecosystem are a key to our growth. We actually enjoy the largest end user community of any software foundation, and we're very proud of that. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, if you want to learn more about CNCF or want to reach out anytime, it's an open door policy. Find me on Twitter. I spend way too much time there. And I will. I have open DMs, and anybody can uh, tweet at me. Uh, with that said, thank you so much for having me, Diane. Excited to talk about end users in open source. And Todd, how about you? Tell everybody what you do. Yeah, thank you, Diane. And, and thank you for having me as well. Uh, I've worked in open source for IBM on and off over the last oh, 20 some odd years. Uh, spent quite a bit of time uh, setting up organizations such as the CNCF. Uh, I was uh, chair of the board there at, at one point and uh, have you know watched organizations grow, especially those organizations who have embraced uh, end users and bringing them in. Um, each of the organizations that um, I've participated in, I've always been a strong advocate for end users. Um, I also have IBM's open source project office uh, underneath my organization. And I spend quite a bit of time working with clients, uh, just helping them understand how to set up their own, how to get going in open source. Uh, one of the things that we embraced a long time ago was that, you know, as we brought in more folks into, into the open source world, um, they would uh, you know, of course, benefit from being able to directly input their changes and their requests into the communities. And uh, it's exciting to see uh, all of the businesses that we work with these days have strong contingents of, of open source consumption and, and many, many, many of them out there now uh, working to uh, be contributors as well, too. So I'm going to queue up a slide here and I'm going to also give a great shout out. Uh, Priyanka. One of the impetuses for this conversation was the talk, the keynote that you gave back at KubeCon EU, and you talked about something called the virtuous end user cycle. Um, and I don't know whether you coined that phrase or whatever, but you certainly put a spotlight on it. So I was going to share this slide, next slide here, and um, so people would see this. And this is my MS Paint version of the beautiful thing that you had. But maybe you could share. Um, what you meant by the virtuous end user cycle a little bit here, and that would help kick off this conversation. Yes, absolutely. So 
uh, as we've all discussed just now, end users are very critical to open source, and we all believe that. Um, when CNCF started four or five years ago, uh, it was it brought in these amazing technology projects that were going to effectively help. If, if you're moving to cloud, if you're doing cloud computing, here's a cloud native way that leverages containers, which um, you know just made things more streamlined for you to utilize external resource, compute resources. As all that happened, in the first few years, we were very focused on um, education because the delta between um, the folks who came up with the modern technology stack and the larger like Fortune 5000 out there was quite big. The Fortune 5000 was much more focused. And of course, there's amazing examples out there that were much ahead of their time, but I'm just Speaking generally, folks were uh, they want they needed to learn the basics, you know, cloud native 101. And over time, what we have seen is that enterprises have done a phenomenal job of understanding what it means to modernize your technology stack so that you can be more responsive to your customers in a resilient way. What has that meant? They have gone all in on containers. They've gone all in on Kubernetes. They have gone super far to become an agile, fast uh, technology shop everywhere. As that's happened, they've gotten more and more uh, experienced into what are the problems when you deploy cloud native technologies. So they have a very unique perspective that is critical for any project creator, for any uh, enhancer. And when I think of enhancer, it's companies that build value add uh, products on top of the open source projects that we host. So the feedback from the end user becomes a really critical because now the end user is in the has the information asymmetry in their advantage, right? Where they know more than us what they exactly need, where the problems are, et cetera. So number one in this virtuous cycle of empowering the end user is that when you give end users a formal seat at the table, when you really may empower them to be part of the conversation, they're guiding the projects, they're sharing what, should, uh, what they would like to see in the roadmap or giving feedback on what they tried and didn't work. That's one level. Then the second, is sometimes they may identify a gap large or complex enough that they may create a project and contribute it to open source. There's plenty examples like that. I mean, Envoy from Lyft and Jaeger from uh, Uber are graduated projects in the CNCF that came from these end user companies and then are now um, well used by a lot of people are like established as uh, very uh, looked up to open source projects. So that's the second piece, right? And then when these projects exist, there are folks who may build enhancements on top of that and have uh, value add services on top. And so when you involve the end user, basically this virtuous cycle starts where projects get good feedback, projects then meet end user needs. If they don't, end users start contributing and building projects themselves. Then enhancers come in and uh, offer value add services, which then get consumed by end users and the cycle continues. So this is the age of the end user in open source and they are now guiding us towards the best solutions. Does that help? Yeah, that is perfect. Because I think the epiphany I had when you did that um, on on the screen at the in the keynote was, that there's a, yeah. a changing nature um, of the end user's yeah. role in open source initiatives. And the way that I think of it is historically, um, like if I go back eight or nine years, often an, an, an enterprise or an enterprise organization end user would get the vendor, Red Hat, maybe IBM, to yeah. put in the bug fix for them or put the bugzilla note in um, and obfuscate that it was actually them using the open source. And so there's this whole arc that has happened um, over the past, you know, I'd say it's escalated or we're almost hitting this tipping point now where we're now changing the dynamic from vendors doing it for their enterprises to collaborating in the open source world together. And so I think I saw this virtuous cycle here as something, um, a very nice way to illustrate that um, and also made me think that we have maybe hit a change change in the role of the end user from um, feedback giver and insights onto their workload giver 
to actually working with us side by side in most of these projects. So as you pointed out, Jaeger and um, Jaeger from Uber or Lyft Envoy. donation, Envoy, or this morning I did a, a or a while, a, when we were recording this, probably when I, I did a talk with Ericsson, who's doing a lot of work around Metal Cube. Um, and so you see this huge amount of effort from enterprises going into these projects now, and we're side by side. So it kind of changes the nature a little bit of how vendor relations are with end users. Um, and I think it's a good thing. I think it's, you know, but it's also, it's, we're watching the dynamics change a lot. Um, and I think some of the things that you've done with the CNCF and the TOC, adding end users onto the TOC and representation into the board uh, have really helped things um, immensely, empowering them to have the voice and give away that podium. So I know, Todd, um, a lot of the other things that we've been seeing too, um, and maybe from your perspective, these, these things we call OSPOs or open source um, program offices are sprouting up at places like Apple and other ones. And um, they we've be, used that, that um, department in, shall we say, or bit that section of our companies to help coach them. But it's also changing. It's becoming a vital piece of these new companies and organizations. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the role of open source program offices and, and how to encourage um, and explain the business value of open source into the enterprise. Yeah, yeah very, very good. And, you know, the it's, it's, it's something that we started a very, very long time ago in IBM. So we've got, you know, a 20 plus year history of having an open source project office because as we got going in Linux, we found that um, you know we wanted to be able to manage our contributions, but then as we got more and more into other open source projects, it became apparent that you had to really keep track of what was going on out there. You have to make sure that you're using code that's licensed correctly, has the right IP rights, et cetera. So, so it became just sort of ingrained in, in how we did things. And, um, and I think most of the other providers, vendors out there, at, you know, at some point or another adopted the same sort of thing and structure within their companies. But, but the change now that's come about is that uh, general businesses, people who are our partners um, in things, people who are our clients, um, have, have latched on to um, open source and have become great consumers of it. But then they really found that if they started uh, contributing and could you know, be on that leading edge, they could gain velocity uh, versus their competition. And as a result of that, um, they were being much more disruptive in their industries. They were gaining market share. They, they were able to be on that leading edge and it have some sense of control. And, um, and therefore, they also needed to monitor what they were doing, what they were contributing, the licenses, et cetera, right? So, uh, so developers got very engaged and the project offices, you know, uh, started to, to spring up. And uh, what we've found is that um, every large Fortune 500 at some point or another now is, is on this path at some place. They've either been consumers or they're out contributing um, um, in some small ways, maybe, or maybe just coming up with, you know, a comment or an issue. And then some of them are full-fledged in there going in and contributing code. You know, I think about Kubernetes and the things I watched as we were building Kubernetes, let's see, Salesforce, scheduler work. I know they work with my scheduler folks, uh, controller enhancements, uh, GM, documentation. You know, documentation is the unsung hero of all the open source projects that we have going on out there. And, and some of the, the first thing I ever got involved in my life was writing uh, the documentation for satellite tracking uh, program out in an open project, right? Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a way to get engaged and get started and get your feet wet. Uh, Bloomberg, right? Here's, a, would you expect Bloomberg's out there doing Kube command line enhancements, right? Uh, gee, <laughs> kind of strange, who, who, right? Who would have ever thought, who would have ever who? thought that Bloomberg, uh, you know, a financial services sector, you know, that industry would be open participants in collaborations um, and getting permission to participate in these things. And so I think um, often what, what we see is what, and I think you hit the nail on the head with the documentation story too, is what we're seeing is a redefining of what it means to be a community member. And um, I, I saw someone jokingly refer to like, if you're reading this documentation, then you are a community member, right? It's not just writing it. It's like, if you're watching this 
video and you're in this OpenShift Commons event, you are a part of this community. Um, you're hearing this, you, you know, this talk, you're getting this feedback. We're going to ask you for feedback on it. And someday we're going to make you talk at, on one of these podiums as well. So it's, I think what um, one of the, the things around empowering end users that, that I'd like to tease out too is how we're changing um, the definition of who's in the community as well and, and coach and how to coach people. Um, and I think this is what I've used OSPO um, and open source initiatives like everybody from inner source commons to chaos and other groups, how to coach enterprises to enable and to allow their um, end user to participate. Because historically, um, that hasn't been an easy thing for people and still for a number of folks. You know, there are the Fortune 500s, that, you know, who have wonderful OSPOs. They have too and, many lawyers. They have too many yeah. lawyers. <laughs> yes. And the lawyer <laughs> from the, the gate to to the participation. And uh, even though I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV, I, I do go out and spend time often just talking to people's legal teams. And, and I've even brought in some of the IBM folks who wrote some of the licenses, like the Apache version two license, to go talk to lawyers within uh, organizations so that they could understand the implications of what was going on there. Um, because that tends to be the first stumbling block. There's other stumbling blocks like security and, and other things that people start to get concerned about. But I've always found that the legal team seems to be the first ones that you've got to kind of get around and, and convince as you go through this. It, the compliance and risk yeah, officers I, are usually yeah. that. Priyanka, who are the first ones for you? <laughs> well, so I would say there are two aspects, right, that are very important when you're trying to encourage contribution and uh, as as Todd said, there's, there's always going to be stumbling blocks when it comes to, you know, people whose job it is to make sure everything's okay with like lawyers, compliance teams, risk teams, et cetera. The two things I think is one, as, as you said, Diane, every contribution matters. I think that has always been true, but it's only now being recognized. So when we talked about documentation, documentation is critical. We in CNCF help all our projects as much as we can with docs writers, with connecting them with other uh, enhancers who can help them. It's, a, it's like an active part of the job. Um, but that's actually like, if you think about it, the folks who are setting up this event, the events organizer, they're doing a pretty massive service. When you think about uh, the people listening, they are spending the time trying to understand. So they're, everyone's becoming part of the larger community. And the more they see themselves as somebody who can step in and be like, hey, I have a suggestion for how to do this event, or I have a suggestion for how that, uh, you know, maybe we reword this documentation, or here's a typo, or here's an issue, et cetera. The more people understand that it's an open dialogue, the more they do things which at the early stages may not even require legal approval, right? And that's the best case scenario, uh, because then you start building that groundswell. So that's one aspect that's really important understanding that every contribution is important and creating like ways for people to kind of come into the various uh, channels and uh, talk about what they think should be done differently the second piece is to especially for projects open source projects to create official uh sort of roles and responsibilities for end users so yeah. Uh, at the CNCF, what we have done, uh, as you folks both know very well, is uh, you know at the technical oversight committee, which decides which projects get in. They have end user representatives, and that's required. Like you need to have X number of end users. Same for the governing board. Same for various other uh, avenues. And what that does, it creates that awesome uh, energy of top level engagement as well as the groundswell that we just talked about that comes from every contribution matters. So with the combination of that, it becomes that much easier to convince legal teams and anyone in compliance and risk that look, this is a industry-wide thing that's happening. This is not just like Priyanka is really excited about doing something that she does for fun and getting paid for it, right? It just like changes the dynamic. And I think thinking about that, like structure the open source uh, end user in and value everything they bring in is what really make moves the needle forward. 
I think one of the things that um, that the Kubernetes community has done really nicely, um, and so I shout out to Paris Pittman and, and Josh Burkus and the folks in the contributor strategy thing is they they have a, a concept of the contributor ladder, um, and really mm -hmm. one of the things for the projects um, and Envoy is a good example of this, as is Porter and, other, and a number of really clearly well defined ladders for how to become you know. To how to contribute and then how to become a maintainer. So there, there's steps in the progress. So making that really yes. clear um, is, yeah. has been a huge help. And so that's one of the the best practices I could shout out at every project that, you know, and, and some of the ones that I work on aren't the best at documenting that. But I think that's something that um, clearly the contributor SIG, um, the strategy SIG has done some great work around as well to help people. On yeah. yeah, excellent. And that was, you know, and that was really by design as, as we built the organization, as we wrote, you know, the bylaws and stood things up that we wanted to make sure there was a clear path in each of the projects to um, get to be a maintainer. Um, that's that's you, you have to have that that equal playing field, that ability, that well-defined path yes. in order to, for people to really want to be uh, out there and contributing. But, you know, a, a lot of the stumbling blocks initially that, that I see with people first trying to get out there is it's kind of daunting, right? You're putting yourself on the line. There's mm -hmm. this, you know, first, you know, um, first pull request that, you know, gee, am, am I doing it right? And, you know, um, so people get nervous. And, and oftentimes what we do is, especially internally here, even within the company, um, for, for folks who haven't been engaged in open source, is we run a, a process where we call it a dojo and, and we help them and, and we get them to get their first pull request in. And then we mentor them for a period of time to help them and, and understand how to interact with people in open source. It's different than, than doing product. Um, you know, mm -hmm. product is really well defined, top down driven. Yeah you know your managers micromanaging you over the top sometimes right and and open source isn't like that and and i guess the other thing that i would say to people getting started is uh, make sure you're you're really out there um, helping um, the team to just go and examine code and uh, do the due diligence on on all the code that's that's coming in um, you know there's uh, you 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 can be involved in that part of the process even before you're out there trying to get a pull request in, right? Um, and and that's that's helped you to do those code reviews, and it helps the projects. And uh, and then if there's people who are eminent in the community that you look up to, work with them, help them get the work done that they're trying to do. And uh, while you're doing that, you you know of course and you're doing the code reviews, you're helping them with code. Um, it will help you accelerate your way uh, towards becoming a, a committer or a maintainer on a project. So um, it, it can be very fulfilling, and and it's not too hard. Um, and the rules are out there, you know, kind of sort of. There's lots of places to look. IBM offers suggestions on how to be a good contributor, as does Red Hat and others, and as as does the CNCF. So just get involved, you know, and and work with your company. And if you you have issue getting going uh, in open source because you have roadblocks in the company. Uh, there's so many of us that have gone down that path. Just ask for help. We'll help you, you know, um, with the arguments you need to convince people to get engaged. Yeah. I 100% agree, and uh, particularly what you said. Uh, sorry, uh, particularly what you said, uh, Todd, about you know, like it's work with people. If there is someone who is trying to get something done, like support them, and that way, like your journey becomes further. So, open source, just like any other place, it's all about the people. The difference is, yes. you can reach out to them online, and they will reply to you. They don't need to meet you two, three times to do like work with you. It's very open. Anyone open open source anyone can like knock on any door and get entry and i think that's the beauty of it and i hope people see that over time that more and more people see that that this is actually the one place where you want to make an effort there are lots of people who could take that effort and guide your journey along the way it's all about people but you can build a relationship with anyone that you want to so one of the things i just you talked about some of the things that are daunting, Todd, uh, you know, making your first pull request. Well, one of the things that we even com longtime community people um, find daunting is the growing complexity of the, eco the entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So whereas in the past, you, maybe we were focused on a single project or, um, you know, trying to get people to contribute to 
our upstream project and or get feedback for ourselves. Now what we see is, especially like in the CNCF, is all these interdependent projects that have multiple complexities. And so um, I think one of the really daunting things for newbies coming into the CNCF and even people who are trying to, you know, find out when the next release is for, you know, Prometheus and how Grafana interfaces with that. And then, oh, I'm using something and I'm using something in telemetry. But the alignment of all of those Rubik's Cube and three-dimensional um, chess games is really very daunting for folks. And so... Well, yeah, of, and it, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, that, I was just curious what you thought of um, how we can help people navigate that and where, where the role is for um, different parts of the CNCF for OSPOs and other places to do that. I, I think the, the obviously I, I always advocate start simple. Again, things like documentation, uh, finding the, the, the niche where there's a place where you feel comfortable um, contributing, but then there's a need in it as well too. Um, so many of the projects are really dying to have people come and join them and, and good competent uh, developers will be embraced and handed the keys to the kingdom to, to help them in their journey, you know, promoting their code and, and moving it forward. Um, so, you know, I always always find an area that I'm, I'm interested in most and, and go dig into that because I'll be happy doing it. And, and you know, look for a community that's vibrant, right? One that really has yeah. good solid level contributors, has that clear path to how you become a maintainer, is, is running an open governance so that um, you, you know, there's no single vendor in control of it and um, you know, works completely out in the open. It's the transparency that makes this work so much that you, know, you don't want things running around in the background in secret, you know, where other people are making decisions and suddenly some piece of code shows up that you hadn't seen before and it kind of blows everybody away. Uh, you, you know, one of the things you see in, in projects is they gain so much velocity sometimes that the original folks who were the contributors of the base code don't even recognize what's there as they go away for three or four <laughs> months because it's all just changed, right? And, and so it's staying up with that is tough. So um, it, there, are, there are tons of dependencies and you've got to trust and work with those dependencies. And if you've got a problem, get a hold of the folks who are working in that. You know, sometimes it can be super daunting. I, I've seen projects that have 2000 dependencies that get pulled in with them. Um, that's, that's tough, right? So, um, you know, start small, work your way in is, is, and do it on something that's exciting to you. So what, what I would things? say, uh, go for it. You'll go for it. Oh, may I? <laughs> so first of all, 100% agree with Todd. And second of all, uh, something I've seen work quite effectively for people is if you're an engineer or, you know, a engineer or technical person of any sort, right? Docs writer, product manager, et cetera. Anyway, you are probably consuming or utilizing an open source library project many of those you're probably consuming and utilizing like a lot of them and so you are very close to some of their in your daily work and they can be a really great place to start because there you're the end user so you know how that uh, particular project is performing for you you know what the issues are you know what you would like to see changed so you start with um a knowledge advantage and so that can be uh, those projects can be a really good place to just start getting your feet wet uh, in terms of, you know, like checking out docs, commenting, maybe eventually having a pull request. And at that point, you have become pretty conversant in how does this whole open source thing work? And at, in that moment, then you can kind of decide, hey, do I like this here or am I interested in this other ad adjacent technology? Or I'm looking for a project that does contributions differently and has a different vibe, you know, because it's a community at the end of the day. So that can also be a good way to kind of get started is like pick something that you're really familiar with and you use in your uh, daily work and that can take you quite far. So I'm going to, we're almost to the end of our time, but I'm going to ask one more question. I'm going to ask you, um, are we at a tipping point where we're going to see more of these projects driven by the end users um, than they are vendor driven? Um, so how about closing on that note? Have we hit that tipping point or are we still in the stage of having to enter, you know, in, engage and nurture new end users to come on board? I'll, I'll start. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, you go for it. 
I'll go first. Uh, I think momentum is building. I believe that we're seeing the start of, of the real ramp. I think it's going to be an exponential ramp. I think the tipping point is still a few years away. Um, so, you know, I think we're, we're, we're there in, in terms of buy-in that open source can be much better quality code, much better security in a lot of ways. And uh, now uh, they can find people who will engage and do a good job within their, their companies. And I think that you'll see the end users take a very significant role um, in the near future, but, but it's not the tipping point where they'll be the ones running the show yet, I don't think. How about you, Priyanka? Yeah, where, where I, you I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree with Todd. I feel like I've agreed with Todd 100% on this panel. <laughs> and that's just because yeah, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and I would say that, yeah, we're not at the tipping point by any means. This is just the beginning. This, like, while we enjoy the largest end user community, for any open source foundation, it's only 140 plus people. There's a Fortune 5000 over there, and that's just the top 5000 companies, right? So there's a lot of ground to cover. That's number yeah. one. Second is I do think that it won't ever be that, oh, the end users took over and like the vendors are like, I don't know, off doing something else somewhere. I, I think that the definitions of what's an end user, what's an enhancer or a vendor, what's a part project contributor, open source project, everything's gonna get more blurry, which is also a good thing because if you are an end user and you start using a project uh, that's open source, and then you start commenting on it and you slowly start doing more contributions, then you're in the contributor bucket if we are to go with buckets. And then let's say you get hired by uh, an enhancer who's building a great product on top of it, and then suddenly you moved over there. But you're the same person with all those unique experiences. So I think that that diversity of experience in one individual is going to grow. And that's awesome. That's really good because that changes the story of us versus them to everyone together, everyone team cloud native in the case of CNCF. So those are my two cents on what I think the uh, where we are in terms of whether the end users have taken over or not. I, I think it's, it, I think you both hit the nail on the head. I, I, to, I, I we're going to keep saying we 100% agree with each other. I think there's <laughs> I think we're closer to the tipping point. And I think for, from my perspective, from the OpenShift Commons, what we're really trying to do is empower the end users to be part of this greater peer-to-peer -peer network so that they're sharing best practices and lessons learned and they're hearing it from each other as opposed to from um, you know, vendors and foundation folks. And the more we can do to nurture and engage those relationships across um, industries uh, and between end users with different and shared workloads, the more we're gonna get you know, much better innovation driven back into these projects. And I'm really looking, I, I don't think we'll ever hit a tipping point where, as you put it, um, it's all end user driven or all you know, or some other variation. I think people's, it's gonna get blurry. I think it's already a little blurry. And um, I think one yes. of the wonderful things about this ever-changing universe that we live in um, and the cloud native team that we're all part of is, is that collaborative nature and the willingness of people to share their stories. And as long as we keep giving people the space and the podium um, to share their stories and to give them clear contributor ladders to get their contributions in and coaching from folks like uh, Todd and Priyanka to coach their organizations to let them participate. We're going to have um, an amazing future for open source. So um, with that, I want to thank both of you for everything that you do um, to make the CNCF an awesome space to work in, as well as um, people to, to collaborate with. So thank you very much today for your participation here. And i um, going to let you go back to your day jobs. And we'll hear you in chat, hopefully, sometime during KubeCon. So um, thanks again, guys. Yeah, see you at KubeCon. Thank you so much. See you at KubeCon. Yeah. See you at KubeCon tomorrow. Take care, guys. <laughs>